Zach Wilson looked good. The Bengals got destroyed. The Bears lose again. We're going to cover a lot of ground here. Food for Thought Week 5. Welcome back, Will Priester. It's good to see your face. Yeah, man, for sure. It's uh, it's always a good time uh, on, on this particular show. And one that I look forward to every week because I just get to unload my fandom and a little bit of technical jargon here and there. So uh, always, always just grateful, man, that this show continues to roll on with you and myself. Uh, I guess we're doing some, something right. We continue to get the renew button every year. And so, uh, you know, we're almost out of week four, headed into week five. And I can't wait to uh, to unload some goods this for, for this. This should be a good show. I can't wait. I'm so excited because today we are joined by none other than Taylor TJ's Warwich. <laughs> why why are you mixing in my first name in there, man? You're gonna you're trying to you sound like my uh my one aunt and uncle who for some reason refer to me by my birth name as opposed to TJ like everybody else. But it's good to see you, man. I've been uh doing a few shows every now and then with Chief, and uh that's been real nice. But Luch, I haven't seen you in it feels like months, and so excited to get together with you guys and talk a little NFL and just whatever else pops up on our plates. It just must really suck for you that you know, like by default, that you're playing for second in terms of the people who are named Taylor in terms of popularity in like the country. Like, you know what I mean? Like you're playing for second. It's whatever. But, you know, we will not make any T-Swift references after this because it's just like bombarding television and it, I'm over it. I, I'm over it. I'm, That's what happens okay. when... Someone who is more impo- more popular than the entire league combined <laughs> starts dating one of the players. Hey, uh, you know what? Let's get right into it. And elephant in the room. A lot happened. So much happened. And things are finally starting to take shape one way or the other. We're, we're finally getting to find out some, some more truths about who these teams really are now that we're entering the fifth week here. Um. So let's throw it over to our guest here, TJ, first. What, what was your biggest, in terms of outcomes uh, in games or player performances, what was your biggest holy crap moment from, from this past weekend? I mean, personally, from a personal standpoint, it is the Saints getting just torched by the Buccaneers, and I need them to have a new off. I need Pete Carmichael to be relieved of play, of play calling duties ASAP because – they have way too many good playmakers in that offense for them to be doing so poorly. The Bills seem to really have figured out that Miami offense and their defense continue to look pretty strong with a ton of takeaways. I found that one really interesting. And then the Bengals just really, really don't look good this year. One of my preseason predictions was that Joe Burrow was going to win MVP and throw for 5,000 yards this year. Whew, was I wrong? Yeah, those, those are three major outcomes that happen. Uh, Chief, touch on whatever you want to in that regard with, with those three things. You know, what what do you want to look to? I mean, we, we talk about Joey Bungles quite a bit. Um, on the flip side, though, a great response from Tennessee after getting whacked by Cleveland. And, you know, Burrow doesn't look right. T. Higgins has fractured ribs now. Nothing good is happening. But – for a defense that is more than respectable as well, the Tennessee offense, after looking dead, you know, almost hung 30 on them as well. So, uh, you know, definitely panic button season in Cincinnati, I think. Yeah, I mean, but but once again, I, I'm really not shocked with the Bengals this season. And I'm saying that because, once again, injuries can derail any franchise. And – that's the bug that they're dealing with this season. And it started before the season even began with Joe Burrow. So honestly, I really didn't expect the Bengals to win as many games anyway. Uh, that's another reason I was so high on Cleveland to start the season. If everybody, if anybody listened to any thing I've talked about preseason, like I, I was very high on Cleveland because of the, the unsettling uh, uh, situation in this division. Like, the Steelers suck. The Bengals, you know, Joe Burrow's been hurt from the start of the season. Now T. Higgins is hurt. And so that just left Lamar with new weapons. And 
Beckham's been hurt. Andrews has been hurt. Guys on the defensive side have been hurt. Guys on the offensive side have been hurt. Like, the, the one steady team has been the Browns, and then Nick Chubb goes down. And then Deshaun Watson didn't play this past week. So I think for me, the AFC North might be the most interesting division in football by the time we end this thing because of injuries. Like, to me, injuries have really just destroyed this division outside of – and Kenny Biggin got hurt yesterday, so we'll we'll see what's up with that. The Steelers just probably need an overhaul. But outside of the Steelers, everybody else has, like, major injury concerns right now. Yeah, what what a 180. I, I'm after that butt kicking that Pittsburgh took, and of course Kenny Pickett went down. It doesn't sound great. We don't have anything confirmed right now, but he's gonna miss time. But I mean, you type in Steelers on Twitter, and you have every fan calling for Matt Canada's head. I mean, that the offense is so bland. It's just eight yard out, eight yard out route, eight yard out route. There's it's so bad and. The offensive line, you know, with the additions they made, like they're no better than they were. They have no run game either. They're extremely predictable. Uh, I forget what the exact numbers were, but I, I read somewhere earlier this week that when they were under center, they're running over 80% of the time. And when they're in shotgun, they're passing over 80% of the time. So there's, I mean, these are professionals who are in the 0.1% of expertise of what they should be doing. And to be, to like have, I mean, we're in week five, right? We are just about a quarter of the way through the regular season. Every game matters. There was rumors that Mike Tomlin said he wouldn't make changes, maybe today. What could that possibly be? I mean, it's, I, I know like I'm playing the public side here, and oftentimes the public the public BS is wrong on social media and whatnot, but Matt Canada should have been gone last season, if not in the offseason. I know a lot of teams don't want to uproot and and can offensive coordinators or defensive coordinators in the middle of the year, but at this point in that division, rip the Band-Aid off. I mean, there has to be someone on that staff who is a little more competent and a little less predictable that can do something, especially now when when, when Kenny Pickett's going to miss time. I mean, what, what, what a difference a month makes. TJ, I mean, like what – what how do the Steelers begin to fix any of their issues? It's funny. I feel like almost everything you just said about the Steelers could have been directly applied to the New Orleans Saints as well. Um, but with the Steelers specifically, like it's like you said, it's a good time, I think, to rip this band-aid off because that division is so wide open this year. I think the Ravens and the Bengals were the two favorites, but both of them have just been getting just like a chief mentioned so wildly torched with injuries. Like it's been crazy how uh, heavily those two, those two teams have been uh, attacked. So um, it does feel like a good time to deal with it. I'm, I wasn't really that high on the Steelers this year to begin with outside of George Pickens. And so um, it like, it really hasn't been for me that much of one of those things that has caught me off guard, but I, I, I don't, I just, I don't think this is, really going to be their year regardless they got a great defense i don't think that offense is going to be there i think they need some more protection and that new offensive coordinator but i i think they're a couple pieces away and maybe just a few years of experience away with that offense regardless yeah and you know just keeping it in that division with cleveland of course it seemed like watson was trending towards playing despite the super limited practice reps and then you know as we inch closer to, to sunday well Get in there, Dorian. The, the NFL pre DFS preseason darling uh, just shows you the the margin in skill gap between the guys trying to make the you know the top fifty five <laughs> and you know the ninety guys that are playing in the preseason on every team because you know they were about even in time of possession, well under three yards per play. He threw three picks, and you know Baltimore has. I'll be, we talk about Tennessee quite a bit because they have historically been the most injured team in the last two and a half years. But Baltimore is probably thinking, no mercy here. We have dealt with significant injuries, not only this year, uh, but in the past couple of seasons. I mean, it was last year when they lost Marlon Humphrey um, and who else was it on the same exact play. Now, Rashard Bateman, you know, lingering foot issues. Beckham uh, supposed to come in and, and fill a void. Nope, nope. Uh, two more off the list here. So uh, that Browns defense was not put in a great position because of obviously the lack of, uh, you know, consistent drives by the offense. 
But you know that defense was supposed to travel uh, a little bit better than they did, and could, could, you know taking nothing away from Baltimore, that was a massive, massive win. And you know, cheap. You know, we talk about one score games, and you can't help who's on the schedule and things like that. You know, Baltimore could not help that Deshaun Watson missed that game. Maybe they were in that building. I'm sure they expected to thoroughly take care of business, and they did. You know, they 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 whacked Cleveland and got it done. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, Deshaun Watson being out of this game is why this game was a, a train wreck. So I, I I I want to hammer that home because I think it's important, right? Like we've been talking about, or I've been talking about the fact that I thought Deshaun Watson was going to progressively get better and better this season. And right after we see a game that he's probably about as close to the old Deshaun Watson as, as ever, he goes out. Not only does he go out, remember, this defense in Cleveland was supposed to be elite in a sense, right? One of the best defenses in football, and, and they lose 28-3 to now. Part of that, and I think this, this is where I want to drive home the fact that competent quarterback play in the NFL is important. If Deshaun Watson plays this game, I can assure you they don't lose 28 to 3. I'd put my house on that. I'm not saying they win. I think they win, but but my point is 28 to 3 because of a lack of better quarterback play. So I I, I think Deshaun's helping this team out a lot more than we realize, even if he doesn't look like Deshaun from Houston every single play. Um, so I, I'll leave that, that about this division. I've got tons of other things I, I, I can cover. Um, and I, I do want to talk about the bottom of the, the bottom feeders game, which was the Broncos bears. Um, these defenses are terrible. And I think from a DFS perspective, every week we need to just make sure we remember that. These teams can't stop anyone. We saw Justin Fields go out and throw for over 300 yards against this Broncos defense. Uh, Russell Wilson didn't have to do as much because he had some help on the defensive side, obviously. But this is a 31-28 game, and Justin Fields looked like a man among boys for three quarters, two quarters, let's say two quarters. Um, he still you know, got the fantasy production that he needed, but I don't want to bury the lead here. The Broncos and Bears defenses stink. And so I know we're not in look ahead, but in look ahead, we need to be looking at salaries for whoever these quarterbacks are facing and these what because it, it, people are going to score points on these teams, period. So from a um. DFS perspective, they're getting targeted every week. Every single week, I'm targeting the Broncos. I'm targeting the Bears. I'm targeting the Vikings. I'm going to target the Raiders. I'm going to target the – like, I don't want to overlook that because this is how you continue to win consistently in football. Just attack the bad defenses. Good guy. I don't care who they're facing. They're all-time bad right now. I can't believe after our show together where we were wrong about Zach Wilson sucking on Sunday night, you're going to try and make me play Zach Wilson against the Broncos in week five. Zach Wilson is getting played this week. Ah, he has to get played. So he like, has to. Were it's, either of you watching that Jets Chiefs game in the second half and thought I watched the well, whole game? Yeah, well, but the second half's when things just clicked, and I'm like, "What the hell is happening?" He's throwing back shoulder timing routes and tight windows, and it was just like, "Is it possible that something finally just clicked and there was enough rhythm?" I mean, Zach Wilson in that stretch of 30 minutes of football. This sounds absurd. Looked like a top ten quarterback over from the weekend, and I, Zach I can't Wilson I'm saying is going to look he's... like Tom Brady this week. Oh wow! Well, you know, I, I, don't I know. take that back. Zach Wilson is going to look better than Tom Brady this week. I mean, he has, a, like you said, he has a serious chance to carry that momentum. Are we seeing? This is like, prop. This is maybe a bad analogy, but my favorite, one of my favorite periods in sports was Lynn Sanity. Great documentary, by the way, where it's just like, holy God, this guy is just, you know, going in MSG and dropping 30 a game, hitting buzzer. And Jeremy Lin's a fine pro, you know, like 
kind of like when Nick Foles took over for that Eagles run and, and won the Super Bowl, he was just growing BBs, like performing way above expectation. Are we, are we going to get to see Zach Wilson be for real or not? That's the question. It sounds like you're in, at least for this week. Um, but Chief, and then I'll throw it over to TJ. If Zach Wilson was, if Zach Wilson was, I don't know, you know, had the Steelers defense against him or San Fran, would you be as excited for him? No, I mean, no, no, absolutely not. But okay. but he's facing the Broncos. Let, okay. let me just, guy. it feels like we're already in look ahead. I just want to say the commanders get the Bears at home on Thursday night. I can't wait for showdown. I cannot wait. Sam Howell is going to be, my gosh, it's going to be incredible. And then we get Zach Wilson against the Broncos on the road in mile high. I, I am very excited about Zach Wilson this week. Zach it, Wilson's cheaper than multiple backup quarterbacks. Listen, he's I he's 4,900 on DraftKings, Chief. Listen, he's going in. I, I don't listen, these things don't make me puke because I've seen this. This was my measuring stick. This was my measuring stick. God, I didn't believe this was going to be a Zach Wilson show. This is Zach Garrett Wilson 6K. The, this was my measuring stick, Lutz. What was Justin Fields going to do against this, this defense? That was my measuring stick. Justin Fields, for all intents and purposes, intents and purposes, has looked equally as awful as Zach Wilson this season. Equally. I don't, I'm, I'm not, I don't care how you slice it. He has not looked good. Yesterday, he had about 250 at halftime, if I'm not mistaken. 250 in terms of passing yards at halftime around there. You're telling me that Zach Wilson with an actual running game of Brees Hall and Garrett Wilson and Alan Lazard and Conklin and 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 and, and, a, and a little sprinkle of um oh god Aaron Rodgers is trusted wide receiver. Why is his name eluding? Alan me? Either way, Lizard, he's old. Man. The other guy, he's old. Um, Cobb. Thank you, Randall Cobb. Thank you. Just you know, old, old Kentucky guy. Just is his name eluded me for a second. If the Jets' offense should be able to take off this week, now I'm not saying they win. I'm saying Zach Wilson is going to put up points this week. Gosh, man, the Zach know, Wilson pod. Here, here we go. I mean, I know we're on Monday, but doesn't it just feel like they're all going to be overowned, especially at Zach Wilson at that price? I, I like. I, I don't think so. I think Garrett Wilson could end up being like the highest owned player on the slate, not being only six K going up against Denver after getting peppered with targets against no, the Chiefs. I, it's got to be the Dolphins against the Giants. We're already at look ahead. I, I didn't, the Chief and the Chiefs Vikings play at four twenty five. That's the game. Oh. oh, that's the game, and the Vikings are at home. I don't think the Jets' offense is going to get as much ownership as that. No way. Good point. A lot of juicy games with high totals. And just kind of like circling back before we go, before we put the pedal down into week five. Good good call. (laughs) I mean, it it kind of meshes because obviously Miami throwing 70 up against Denver was a big deal. We we learned that Denver is, in fact, terrible defensively. But – you know, that's two games now that the, when the Dolphins have played competent offenses that they've given up at least 36 points, the Chargers and, and Buffalo. And yeah. they and just Buffalo, could not score Buffalo. And, and Buffalo uh, defense stepped up. And, uh, you know, the Bills quietly schlacked both of their week two and week three opponents. Like quietly was outscoring them. I don't know what it was, what it was like 65 to, to 10 or something. And, um, you know, how about this one? Whenever the Bills have put up 30 plus points in the past two seasons, Gabe Davis has scored a touchdown in seven of ten games now. Just just saying, if you think the Bills are gonna hang 30, Gabe Davis is probably scoring for, for whatever as inconsistent as he was and kind of how disappointing he was last season in terms of DFS and, and ADP. But Gabe Davis scores when the Bills put up points. I, I don't know why. Like there's no other science behind it. He just finds the end zone. But kudos to Buffalo. I mean. That kind of humbled Miami a little bit, you know, very quickly. They're in a good bounce back spot as, you know, they get the Giants in a short week, which we will get to. But Josh Allen looks completely different than he did in the first four quarters of the year. And I, I'm chalking that uh, one up for the season. I'm chalking I'm that one I'm still not high on Josh Allen. 
I mean, he's, we, he's not getting the Aaron Rodgers treatment from me. I just, I just want to say this, Chief. I want to say this, and then I'll give it to you. But you know, you talk about quarter, Josh Allen making suspect decisions. Uh, you know, this season, well, what do you make of the, some of the throws Patrick Mahomes was making on Sunday night? Uh, if you're gonna, if you're gonna, you know, if you're gonna like poo poo on Josh Allen, you got to be like, what was Mahomes doing? I mean, those were terrible throws. Some of those throws were. I was wondering, I, yeah, I don't think those were terrible de- decisions as much as just terrible throws. I think he uh, got caught in the bright lights of Taylor Swift a little bit and just babied a couple of them. God, <laughs> he was just I like, like he was just ten yards short Allen. on like three of those. It was so weird. Yeah, one of them he threw a duck. The ball was just spiraling out of control down the middle of the field. Um, listen, Patrick Mahomes, his body of work says that's a one-off. So I'm going to give him a pass. Here's why I'm not as high on Josh Allen right now. So you have to hear me out here. Hear me, hear me out. It's early in the season. And I think the expectations of this team is Super Bowl. And he, and see, here's where I get really critical with, with the quarterback play. If I'm going to be critical of Aaron Rodgers, I've got to be critical of Josh Allen. Josh Allen is continuing to exit the playoffs too early. Outside of his one year where they almost got there, he's not closing the deal. And last season, we saw this team unravel from the middle of the field, that middle of the, the year down the stretch. Like, I, I, I'm, I like the Bills. I think everybody wants the Bills to finally win. And they may win during the regular season, but this team should, this team is playing for a Super Bowl, and the window is going to continue to get smaller. And I think it's starting to close. I, if Josh Allen can't get to the Super Bowl this year, they're done. This is going to be the Jim Kelly era reincarnate without the Super Bowl appearances. Th- that's what this is for the Bills. So I don't. I like Josh Allen. We're going to judge him week to week. Did he have a really good season last season? Absolutely. But last time I checked, Josh Allen's been in the league longer than Tua. So he's got to get this thing right. They've got to win. They've got to continue to push the envelope, and they're going to need home field advantage. If they don't get home field advantage, they're not going to the Super Bowl. And I, I I know we're jumping, like, way ahead. And as I always say, Injuries can derail any team season, and I'm all about that. When you know if his if he gets hurt and Diggs gets hurt, and you know another one of their primetime defenders gets hurt, which one of them got hurt yesterday? Like I understand that. I always give team a pass. Your top three players get hurt. Come on, like give them. They're not going to the Super Bowl unless you're the San Francisco 49ers. That's the only team in history that can lose 40 quarterbacks and still win. That's it. Nobody else is doing that. The Bills have to stay healthy, and they better – they need – Luch, they have to get to a Super Bowl. Like, this – they have to. If they don't – I don't care how great Josh Allen is in the regular season. We know he's great now. Prove it. Go win the big games. Why are we so hard on Dak Prescott, right? That's what I'm saying. Like, let's, let's, be, let's be clear across the board. Why are we so hard on Dak? He can't win the big game. He can't get into the playoffs and win. Why have I been so critical of Aaron Rodgers? He hasn't been able to get into the big games and get to the Super Bowl consistently to be considered one of these all-time greats like the media has made him out to be. But then you're looking, freaking Brock Brock Purdy may be going to a Super Bowl again. And we don't have him anywhere near the class of these guys. All right, I'm done. On the other side, one more, one more, and and I promise I'm done. Jalen Hurts was a backup quarterback when he entered the NFL. He comes into a situation with the Eagles. Yes, I know he was playing in the NFC least. He's already made it to a Super Bowl. I know the AFC is hard. I don't care. Get to the biggest stage, and then we can talk. TJ, I think the common denominator between Josh Allen's uh, terrible game and Patrick Mahomes is Kudos to the Jets' defense. I mean, yeah, yeah, I think they are uh, a very strong defense. They got great corners. They have great uh, pressure up on the inside. So um, I'm with you there. That Jets' defense is definitely underrated. The one thing with like the Mahomes one is it 
like there were plays he'd had people open and he just played like crap. He has, he has every once in a while, one of these games. And then the second people are like, Oh, he's garbage. Then he goes out and proves that no, he's still the best damn quarterback in the league. Um, and so uh, I agree with chief. I think it's just more of a one-off for Mahomes. Um, and that, uh, that jets, uh, that jets defense is quite solid. I know we mentioned the Pittsburgh game, but Chief, C.J. Stroud, again, again. He keeps doing it. Why, why is he not a Panther? No clue. Uh, we'll, we'll, I, I'm just not even going to talk about that. But I think what we're seeing from the Texans, it's C.J. Stroud. But once again, I'm go- T.J., you, you probably know this. I know Luch knows this. Does anybody know where D'Amico Ryans came from prior to this day? Houston? Great play. Well, he was coaching in San Francisco. And and what was he doing? Coordinating defense. And that defense was flying around, and they were, I mean, a menace to society. And, And look, say what you want. He has this Texas team playing the best that they've played probably ever. Um... And you've got a young quarterback in C.J. Stroud that's getting it done. Luch, we talked about this. He's got the right complement of receivers to not have the names. He's got a guy that can stretch the field. He's got a possession guy. He's got a gadget guy. And he's got a tight end, a professional tight end. And while Dalton Schultz may not be doing getting all the targets he did in Dallas, he still can be a safety blanket. And I think they've coached Stroud. If you look at his target distribution, even though he has, you know, a constant, Nico Collins seems to be his guy in a sense. He's spraying the ball to whoever's open. Well, to me, that goes off, hats off to his quarterback coach, hats off to his offensive coordinator. We don't need you to lock in on a guy. We need you to hit the open man. And guess what they're doing? They're scoring points and they're winning the games that they need to win. And if they continue to play like this, you know, we'll see how 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 everything comes together. They play the Falcons this week on the road. If they win this game, I'm going to be very impressed. Not 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 because they're playing the Falcons, because it's traveling now, right? If you can travel and win games in the NFL, you've got something going. So let's see how this rolls uh, this week when they go to Atlanta. But Stroud's playing straight. He's playing phenomenal. It's a great spot for them. Atlanta's coming back from London. So what a spot for Houston to to if you're going to play a road you know a young a rookie quarterback on the road that's the situation you want teams coming back for another country like yeah are you buying TJ Stroud TJ he looks pretty damn good like I uh, you got a sorry Chief but I mean as a as a Saints fan I'm not mad about Carolina's failures but you got to be wishing as a Carolina fan that uh, CJ Stroud or Anthony Richardson was maybe your guy over Bryce Young right now. But uh, I'm I'm buying it. He looks really good. And, like, I'm not just buying it from a real-life perspective, but I'm buying it from a fantasy perspective, too, because we kind of thought Damian Pierce would be – like, not we, but the, the industry kind of thought Damian Pierce would really be the only viable Houston Texan this year in fantasy. But Stroud is making Dell viable, Collins viable, Robert Woods a little bit viable. Um so many like he's he's flinging it and he's doing an absolutely incredible job what is it 300 yards last week he's getting close to setting rookie records for most passing yards in his first few games he is on pace for the most passing yards in the history of uh in, for a rookie in the history of the nfl who knows if he's going to keep this up throughout the season but like it's tough not to buy into this start because he looks pretty great one of the biggest knocks on him was oh he can't extend plays well they're missing Three starting offensive linemen and the fact that he was able to, you know, protect the football, extend some plays. I know he didn't hit like 70% of his passes or anything, but he can extend plays. I, if, if you saw any of that game, he was rolling out on the run, throwing darts. I mean, just awesome stuff. And we talked about on the pod last week, Chief, how is Collins, Dell. Uh, and Robert Woods, and like typically every week, two of them is getting enough volume to to want to be in your player pool. Last week it was Nico, nine targets, huge day. It pretty much broke the slate at the wide receiver position. 
Uh, and Robert Woods didn't do anything, but he had six targets. And Tank Dell was the odd man out. So it seems like Stroud is is locking on to maybe two of his receivers that he likes matchups in every week. Um, and maybe one of them is having a, a fantasy day. Every week so far between Collins and Dell, I think, or unless, um, unless maybe three of the four weeks, like one of them has been massive upside every week. Uh, week one, it was Nico. It was Nico again in week four. And I think Tank Dell was the two in between weeks, if, if uh, I'm thinking yeah. correct. And Nico's had, he's had like one that was like kind of solid. Like the yards and catches have been there. Like I think one week, I don't know, he had six for 56 or something and maybe no touchdowns. I, I'm pulling that out of thin air somehow. But you get what I'm saying? Like last week, I know he had the big week and I know he had another big one sprinkled in somewhere. And then the week before, not this, the week before this week, it was kind of a down week, and I think week two, one, week one and two, I think he had really good weeks, um, just from a fantasy perspective for his price. Well, we covered a lot of ground, so there's a couple. Can more I say one more thing about last week? What, one yeah, more? Yeah, no, I, we're going to stay here. Yeah, we're going to stay for a little bit. Yeah. So, um, I don't want to overlook. So, like a lot of times, let me let me say this in the NFL. The talent between two teams is generally not as far apart as we think. Like in college, if Alabama plays my local, one of my local college teams like Charleston Southern or the Citadel, like these teams are going to get smoked, right? They just don't have the talent to keep up. In the NFL, even the worst team still has talent, right? It, it may be a philosophy issue. It may be a coaching problem. It may be a front office problem. But – at the core of it all, these are all professional athletes, and there's some there's some real talent on these teams. The reason I'm mentioning that is because not only did we see the Chiefs win 23 to 20, we also saw the Eagles win 31, 34, 31. And, and I wanted to point that out because good teams find ways to win games. And that's the, that's the differentiator, right? Like yeah, the Cowboys are great, but, you know, will they find ways to win games when things don't go well? They, they're not going to beat everybody 38-3 to three every week. And I think we saw a little bit of that in the Arizona game where, you know, the butts are, the butts are clinching up and they're getting a little tight. It's like, hey, that, we, you know, that defense, we got to find a way to win this game, right? Find way. The Chiefs, they, were, they went up, they struggled. But once again, what did it, they found a way to win. Now, yeah, Zach Wilson fumbled on that drive, but they still put together a drive of their own to kick that field goal. They found a way to win. The Eagles, it was a tough game. You know, they had to go in overtime, but they found a way to win. And that's what you have to do in the NFL. So I wanted to say that because I know a lot of times, man, you know, we're expecting blowouts from these really good teams, and that's not going to happen every week. Sometimes they're going to be in a dogfight, and this this is how you know they're one of the elite teams in the league. They find ways to win games. Jalen Hurts did what he had to do, 300-plus yards, you know. Um, DeAndre Swift was good enough. A.J. Brown, massive game, but – Sam Howell, what a bounce back, though. I mean, he showed some real stones at the end there. Yeah. I the game, his clock ran out. Once again, can't wait for showdown on Thursday. Can't I love Sam Howell. Freaking wait. Yeah. I mean, he, he was kind of the one of the best ball late round flyers that picked up a ton of steam. And uh, he's been more than serviceable. I mean, he's still got a two and two competitive football team there with Washington, TJ. Yeah, he was one of my best ball darlings this year as well. I think he ended might have ended up being my most drafted quarterback just because he was always available late in those drafts. And I like I like McLaurin, I like Dotson, and so um, I'm big on uh, I'm big on Sam Howell this year. I was since the beginning of the season, and I really plan on continuing it because he looks really good. And so um, I actually wish this game wasn't on a showdown slate next week, so I could be running out Sam Howell on the main slate. But I'm with Chief. Uh, I'm we very did Zach for that Wilson one. on the main slate. We're good. Yeah, I don't like We're that good. as much. I don't like that as much. <laughs> you, hey, you like that? You like that? <laughs> a couple of these other games we can just touch on before we look ahead. Uh, the London game, Jacksonville took care of business. You know, coming off a loss. 
23 to 7. Calvin Ridley revenge game scored a touchdown. Only got two targets, though. It was the Christian Kirk volume game. Desmond Ritter. Ugh. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure about Desmond Ritter. And I think, you know, we're seeing some chatter with Taylor Heineke, and we've seen Heineke come in and do it multiple times and revitalize a, a dead Washington team. And I think fan, from a fantasy perspective, best ballers and DFS players and season long are, are begging for Taylor Heineke to come in and free Kyle Pitts and, and Drake London just a little bit more. I mean, Kyle Pitts is too damn good to, to be neglected the way he is, the way he's we been. Think. I mean, we unbelievable. Think. I think. We I, th- I mean, we, I'm, we, think he, we think he's too good. I think we, he's we, I, very good. Here's what I will say, and, and TJ, I'll, I'll, I'll kindly pass this thing over to you. I think we think he's better than what is being presented because of the lack of involvement, but we won't actually know until he, he's actually involved. And that's that to me, that's the drawback with Pitts and London. Like we feel like they're good, but are they? We don't. We won't know until they get actual competent quarterback play. And once again, I know Arthur Smith wants to just, you know, wants to turn into exotic Smash Mouth football like the old Tennessee Titans. A little hometown reference there for Luch, but that that doesn't need to me. That does not need to be the identity of this team. Not when you've got Bijan and you've got Pitts. I mean, heck, you've got Cordero Patterson who's going to be back or was back. You, you've got all of these weapons, and we want to line up and, and be three yards in a cloud of smoke? That makes no sense. Put in a quarterback that can throw the ball down the field and give you a shot to, to have some honest offense. And just do it. Like, change, change. it's got to be a coaching philosophy change. Everybody, everybody likes the coach there, but he's not going to get it done with the running the football philosophy in today's NFL. It just doesn't work. Let me say this. For as much as I like the Titans, look at the Titans. They had Derrick Henry, and he's still in somewhat of his prime, but they've got to have weapons to win games. You can't just have Derrick Henry line up. I mean, Derrick Henry was struggling until he had, you know, kind of popped a couple yesterday. Like, come on. Like, get with the times. How long is Desmond Ritter's leash? If he has one, TJ. Like, do you think there's a leash here with Desmond Ritter? Or, I mean, because you can't go back to him this season. It's one of those situations. Yeah, I think I because of how young he is and because of just how not great this team is, I do think he's got a pretty decent leash. But having said that, I like I don't think he's great. I think there's a multitude of factors kind of going into here, though, because – Ritter, one, not great, but I do think it's a lot to do with the coaching and the play calling and this offensive style that they're running here because, like, in terms of how good Kyle Pitts is, and I I don't think that he's – I think certain players have something kind of like a – some like a Puka Nakua where he showed in 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 the combine, you know, he's not the fastest guy, but when plays are running he knows where to go just to find himself open help out his quarterback and get some and get some catches i don't think kyle pitts is necessarily that but what he is is a absolute athletic reek um he's big he's strong he's fast he can catch and so to me getting him more involved lands on the coaching when you have a guy like that you need to go out of your way to be like oh this dude is one of the most athletic guys in the league all right well we have 22 plays in our playbook specifically designed to get him the ball. And then in these other formations, he's going to be the primary target with Drake London coming, coming underneath to, uh, to catch her out if he's not open. Like to me, that's much more of a coaching thing. Um, I've always kind of thought that a good coach has a really great scheme, a great scheme that they can run. And it's awesome. And typically this works more often than not than college because you can, recruit players for your scheme a great coach they don't have a scheme they build their scheme around their players they view their team every year and say well this is what my team is best at so i'm going to adjust my scheme to make sure my best players are getting involved as often as possible and the falcons just don't do that they 
kind of just act like they are a, a we are a football team and this is how football teams win games and this is how we are going to do it as opposed to looking at the players that they have on their team and going that's our best player that's our best player this is our best player we got to make sure we scheme to get them involved and i think that's a uh, i think that's an issue that their offense has right now so why the hell on god's green earth was it john smith getting six targets and and i have a soft spot for john smith right you know i do as a titans fan but good god and very athletic very athletic at his position in his own right but he's not kyle pitts like like give us some more design screens like take it watch some travis kelsey film and see how andy reed incorporate and the, the the thing that blows my mind is arthur smith had that titans team hunting humming when he you know and granted, they had a, a better offensive line, you know, but it was Ryan Tannehill, A.J. Brown, and Henry. And, but it was like Corey Davis and John Smith. I, I, you know, you have some freaking talent in Atlanta. In a, in, and the thing a, is, go ahead. like Kyle, Kyle Pitts and Drake London are not the players I'm about to compare them to. But you look at the Bengals in week three. Joe Burrow's playing on one leg. Jamar Chase wants to get the ball more. He hasn't been involved. But what do the Bengals do? They move him in the slot, the X position, the Y position, the Z position, all over the field. They put him in the backfield and do whatever they can to make sure yeah. that he is get. They're getting their most electric player some touches. Look at Miami. Miami puts Waddle and Hill and Mostert and HN all over the place to make sure they get their best players in position to get the ball. And Atlanta's more just kind of like, all right, this is how we line up. Get, get it to whoever's open this play. But they don't do anything out of their way to get their players in different spots so opposing teams can go, oh, that's the big fast guy. We better make sure we have a big fast guy on him. And then someone else right behind him. And then Atlanta never changes anything, and so they don't ever get the ball. Let me just throw this at you. Can I throw this at you? Sure, 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 sure. So in terms of catchable target rate, Drake London is at 59%, and Kyle Pitts is at 57% this season. I'm cycling through out of any, let's see. Oh, my good Lord. There are 130 NFL players that have ran at least 50 routes this season. <laughs> Kyle Pitts ranks 128th, and Drake London is 126th in catchable target rates. They are pretty much dead last out of any qualifier. They don't even have the opportunity because no one can get – there is no bigger – indicator of piss poor quarterback play than that then you can't even get your stars the weapons and it goes hand in hand with the young quarterback accuracy issues and scheme scheme something better something easier right chief like get the ball in their hand yeah i think and, I, and really i think that's a theme around all teams at some point in time right because i want to go to some of the good teams or one of the good teams like the bills Last season, Stefan Diggs ended the season incredibly frustrated. It's like, bro, it's like I'm not trying to be cocky here. I'm the best receiver on this team, and I've got three targets. I've got four targets. I've got five targets. What is this, right? Like, your best player should never, your best wide receiver, let me say that, should never end a game under five targets, in my opinion. I mean, absolutely never. I don't care if you're up. 21 to zero at the half. Like they need work, right? You've got an electric running back. They don't get eight tar eight carries. You're giving them 15 carries plus because you want them to have opportunities for production. Like a lot of times, that's what targets and carries are. They are opportunities for production. I'm going to go to another team because I think this guy, yeah, he's been a prima donna, he's been a diva. But he should be. And that's A.J. Brown. Look at what A.J. Brown's done the past two weeks when he gets freaking targets. I don't care if Devontae Smith's on the team. The man should be getting eight to ten targets a game, not three and five. Like, come on, right? And that's the issue. Man, I feel like an old man yelling at the clouds on this episode. But that's the freaking issue with the stupid Falcons. Like, get the guys the opportunities. The only guys that have, have opportunities that are actual – is the freaking running back room. Bijan's going to get opportunities. Algier's going to get opportunities. Heck, Devin Ritter's going to get opportunities. 
Cordero Patterson is going to get opportunities, and the wide receivers just have to stand out there and hope that the ball gets thrown to them a couple times a game. That's freaking piss poor coaching. Get the guys the ball. This is my favorite. I love this. That was awesome. Get the guys the ball. There, there's the name of the podcast. Is this get the guys the ball? And just for reference, TJ, the lowest tar- uh, catchable target percentage on the Buffalo Bills out of their top four guys, meaning Gabe Davis, Stephon Diggs, Dalton Kincaid, and Dawson Knox, eighty three percent. And Dalton have- Kincaid just got there. He freaking just got there. And we have we have Drake. And we have Drake London and poor Kyle Pitts under 60%. It's just, it is what it is. You got any last and words about last week, TJ? <laughs> that's why we said we got to like, it's, it's, it's twofold. One, Desmond Ritter isn't making good passes. And two, you can get those numbers up a lot higher if you throw a lot more screen passes, dump passes, specific plays to get those guys involved. And so they got a lot of things that they got to fix. Um, speaking of a lot of things that they got to fix, I'll start it and end it with, my poor Saints, it looks like they are uh, going to be without um, – it looks like they're just going to be without the ability to win games this year. It's so ugly. The offensive line sucks, and the play calling is just horrific. So I would love to see that change, but it was just announced as we look ahead to next week here. Sorry to bury the lead a little bit, Luch. Um, They said they're not – they just announced they're not making any coaching changes uh, for next week. Um, but another thing that I just saw pull up on my Twitter is Jonathan Taylor is practicing this week and they are not ruling out him playing in week five. Well, that is interesting. And I know if you're listening and you're a Cowboys fan, you're thinking, how did they not mention the Cowboys bounce back? We will talk about them because they have a huge game this week. How could you not mention the Rams uh, Colts overtime thriller and Anthony Richardson popped off for over 30 fantasy points because he's running the ball like crazy. We will get to them as well because they have a huge divisional game. I completely, 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 completely forgot about that the poor Jaguars have two back-to-back games across the pond and they're staying in London to play the Bills. I, so I know we just talked a lot about Atlanta, which I didn't expect, but that's why I love this. Does, does that actually favor Jacksonville already being there for 10 days or whatever it is and having Buffalo coming off just uh, the highest of highs in a big division win? We have another London game. We have kegs and eggs, baby. 9.30 Eastern, kegs Buffalo and Jacksonville <laughs> in England. I don't think Jacksonville is good enough to beat the Bills straight up. I'm still taking the Bills. But they got the handicap of being the time change and, you know, a lot of unconventional. I don't think it's that big. They're, no. they're, they're the home team. Like, they're the, the Jacksonville Jaguars are England's football team. So, They've been the one team that's been there every season. They're, they're basically at home when they go. And uh, I still think they're going to get – I still think they're going to lose this game. I don't I don't, I don't, don't think it's as bad as the Dolphins lost this week. Let me say that. But I think they lose. To me, it's just like – it's going to be just like the Commanders, Eagles, the Chiefs, Jets. Remember, good teams will find a way to win. Jag, the Jaguars are trying to be a good team. I do think the Bills are a good team. They just have to close the deal now. And that's where I'm at. Kind of kind of like the under in that game. Uh, I, You know, I just – it feels like it's going to be a little uglier. Uh, five and a half point spread, though. So it just has the making and the feel of a little bit lower scoring than, you know, oh, the Bills just dropped almost 50 on Miami. Well, you know, got to add in that travel just a little bit. In, in Jacksonville's probably a little more formidable defensively than Miami. Anyway, um, I think the Bills make a statement and win like an ugly game and make another That's statement. Actually. I, I like, so I don't disagree with you there. And I don't actually agree with chief too. And that it will be similar to those previous games he mentioned, which leads me to like the best is I want to take, I want to, I want to take Jacksonville with the points. I don't want to think I want to mess around with the money line, but Jacksonville plus it? five and a half. Oh, okay. Um, Five and a half for Jacksonville. I don't. I don't mind that at all because what's, I do think this will be a close it? game. What are the odds? Minus one twenty. I haven't. I haven't looked at that. I just saw the the spread on an app. Uh, it's one. To, DraftKings has them getting six at minus one twelve. Actually, as at, as we're recording right now. So they're, like they're plus six at minus one twelve. Uh huh. On DK. Give, yep. give me the all on that. What's plus seven? I don't know. I don't. I don't have the. I don't have that book open. I have scoresandodds.com okay. open. Like that. That's what I might take it out like. Cause here's the thing. Like I do think 
the Bills are way more explosive than than the Jaguars right now. But I'll take a touchdown for sure. Like in the NFL, I'll take plus seven all day. Most teams, most games aren't going to be won by more than a touchdown unless it's like when you look at obvious matchups like 49ers, Cardinals, Cowboys, Patriots, and even Chiefs, Jets. Imagine this. I took the money line on the Chiefs, not the points. Thank God. But you see my point? Like in the NFL, the talent gap isn't as wide as we think in most situations. So I'll take plus seven. I'll take, matter of fact, I'll take plus seven and a half. Give me a full touchdown. I'm in as long as it's minus 150 or, or, or higher. EJ, bring us into another game. Uh, I guess, Chief, congrats on that uh, that parlay uh, that you hit yesterday with the Chiefs' money line. I bet you were yes. sweating there in that fourth quarter. Listen, I, know we I talked forgot about all that about one that. On, uh, the Roto Grinders pre lock show. Um, that was a six yeah, so we, got, we talked enough about Zach Wilson and the Jets against the Broncos and things like that. But the one DFS thing I do want to touch on is I really like the idea of starting my lineups with – we obviously have that one huge total game. And I love the idea of starting out my lineups with Justin Jefferson and Travis Kelsey, and then going with those cheap guys on uh, on the Jets, like Zach Wilson, like Garrett Wilson, like Alan Lazard below 4K over on DraftKings. That's going to be one of my favorite, I think, ways to start the DFS build uh, for the next coming week. Um, how do you guys view the Dolphins offense after one week down? Now going up against the Giants, huge favorites. Like, do you think the Dolphins are going to be back to their 500 yards a game self? Listen, I'm so glad you mentioned this. I didn't know if you guys were going to mention it. I've been sitting on pins and needles, uh, sitting over a, over a boiling pot of water. Uh, I'm going right back to the Dolphins. I played the Dolphins pretty much every week of DFS. I am literally going to be plugging in so much to a Tyreek and Waddle this week. It's not even going to be funny. If you don't think this team's going to get off against the freaking Giants, my gosh, like, I hope the Giants play well tonight. Like, that's really what I'm hoping. I hope the Giants look like an all-time offense so they can go down to Miami and get shellacked. And not shellacked. I actually want the Giants to keep up so Miami can keep scoring. But my point is, I think this is the primetime spot for the Dolphins. Um, I think they're going off again. I, I'm – I think the Dolphins score 30 plus points here. So anything I can get on the books, like they're probably going to come in, I don't know, maybe 24 and a half or something. Uh, where, where where are they at right now, Luch? We have a line on that game in terms of just their points. Like if, if anything in the 20s, I'm taking the over. Anything. And I might even I might even ladder up some of the alts all the way up to about 31 and a half. Uh, I don't have any alts at the moment. Uh, but mega favorites, like kind of on the flip side, we're recording Monday before the Giants Monday night game. But I mean, Daniel Jones, 5,800. We know he has rushing upside. I don't mind pairing him with Waller and and, and getting the ceiling player. For, if there's only one, <laughs> if there's only one ceiling Miami player at this rate, it could be a chain. Uh, he might have eight carries and score twice and, you know, break a 60 yarder. Um, but it just feels and we're waiting on Jalen Waddle. He was in my my Bills line. I was really disappointed uh, with the lack of you know Jalen Waddle explosiveness against Buffalo. We're still waiting on that. So like if you're looking to get the one ceiling guy and have a cheaper start, I I like both sides of that. I you know as bad as Daniel Jones can look from week to week, I will never stop thinking about using him in my player pool because of that rushing upside. You know if he's 80 yards and a score at less than 6K, you're in a negative. Game script, you're probably on your way, but we'll see how he looks against Seattle, first of all, that's for sure. That that game, I think, will deliver, at least on one side, for DFS purposes. Yeah, I think that uh, I think that makes sense. I really like the Dolphins for DFS purposes in this one. Tyreek Hill, I think, is poised for a great bounce-back spot. He really let a lot of my lineups down. It kind of was unfortunate in terms of my main lineups last week. The ones that had Stefan Diggs also had Tyreek Hill. Um, but I'm still going to be going right back to the well. Yeah, we um, we mentioned the Eagles. We didn't mention uh, the Rams, who had an OT win at Indy. Um, I mean, tough matchup for the Rams in this one. Will Cooper Cup return? And if he returns, how much will he play? It's Monday. Tune into another show to find out later this week when they have more 
uh, information. But that's an interesting one, right? I mean, will Cooper Cup return? That That's a huge headline. Yeah, it is. Like, I'm personally probably going to be avoiding that Rams offense, wait and see a little bit. Puka is priced up now. And so I'm going to be interested in watching that game and watching that Rams offense. But I'll probably kind of wait and see how everything looks once he's back inserted. I know, Chief, I know Philly's traveling across the country, but they're in a dome. They're coming off a, a gritty win, still put up 30 points. Like, outside of Aaron Donald, that defense isn't very good at it could be a low key smash spot for the Eagles, I think. Who, you know, we you mentioned TJ you mentioned like three or, or Chief, you mentioned three or four games in the beginning that were really appetizing for DFS. The Eagles might be a little bit of an afterthought, like as much as much as they could be an afterthought on this slate. Yeah, I, I like the Eagles for sure. Like, I think it's a good spot for them. I, I was kind of thinking about putting together some mini Eagle stacks yesterday, like some Hurts and and AJ Brown and, and Devontae and. I just didn't quite pull the trigger because I only, you know, I did a lot more hand building yesterday. So I didn't quite get there. And I looked at the game and I said, yep, I knew it. Like I knew it was a division game, but I figured, you know, the way Washington's scoring, one of the things we, we can say about the enemy, Washington can score points now. Like they're, they're scoring. They just got to start putting together some, some, some better defense here. So uh, kudos to Eric the enemy for, kind of putting his stamp on his offense and, and, and allowing this these guys to thrive. I, I have an under-the-radar game this week, and we've already talked about most of them, so you probably already know what it is. But call me crazy, the Cardinals might get off this week again. They're at home. Burrow's still struggling. Um the formula right now is to just keep keep the pressure, keep the pressure coming, and Burrow will falter because he can't move around as much. If if you can find a way to keep the pressure and neutralize Jamar Chase, uh, I think the Cardinals will be able to score points. Like Joshua Dobbs is looking fine. Like you know, yeah, they got beat up by the 49ers. They should have. The 49ers are a top three team in the NFL right now. But I, I think the Cardinals sneakily win this game. And we're probably going to get them at plus money, big time plus money. I'm thinking we get them around plus 140, plus 150 in this one. I could be wrong. I haven't looked. I I feel like taking the Cardinals this week at home. They're a tough team. They play hard. From a DFS perspective, and I'll throw it over to you, TJ. I don't I don't mind going back to Joe Mixon in this spot. Um, obviously, Arizona getting just dominated on the ground, and of course they don't, they want to keep Joe Burrow out of harm's way. They're down. They're likely down T Higgins. Um, and, you know, just seems like such a pedestrian play. Joe Mixon at 6,400. Like, I don't know, you know, but it's such a, you know, in terms of recency bias, he was totally game scripted out of that Titans game too and still got 14 carries. Totally. I think Joe Mixon's interesting and he's not a guy I typically want to play. I don't know if I'll get there because I just honestly don't know if he's good anymore. Like, I think he, running backs just get to a point. You're seeing it with Dalvin Cook too, where it's like, when they lose that half step, they just are not that same player, and it hits in the in the late twenties. So, um, I don't really think I'm going to be going to uh, to mix in in this spot. I like Alvin Kamara a lot, lot more for uh, just like a hundred dollars cheaper. Kyron Williams more for a couple hundred dollars more, um, and even uh, HN and DeAndre Swift uh, who are cheaper than them. So I. I just like that mid range of uh, running back so much. Brees Hall at fifty four hundred dollars, Miles Sanders at fifty two. Uh, I, I definitely am just going to be sticking in that range as opposed to. Uh, I mean, like he's he's in the same range, but even James Connors a similar spot. I would in similar same game. I would rather go with him. I think. I know what uh, we briefly talked about Viking, the Vikings game, Chiefs game, you know, should be a lot of firepower there. But so many, and I don't know how ownership's gonna break out, break down here later in the week, but um, are less people gonna pay up for the Mahomes Kelsey than we were anticipating? I know it's Minnesota, but how much value did we talk about? And how many games like that Miami game did we talk about? Every now and then, you know, Kelsey hasn't had that game yet, right? He was supposed to have that game against the Jets. He didn't have it. Uh I kind of feel like the Vikings can't stop a nosebleed. I, is, is, is he, am I on, am I am I on the wrong side of, of thought process here? 
or is everyone going to galaxy brand themselves into not giving them to the ownership they deserve? Because you're going to have to pay for them, right? You're going to have to pay a premium to, to play both of them. You think they'll be popular? Like the most popular the, duo? The stack will definitely be low owned, I think. Mahomes at they're that expensive. price. Yeah, exactly. I think Mahomes at that price is going to be tough, especially pairing them together with how many great receivers we want to pay up for this week. But Kelsey on his own, I think, is a fantastic spend up. Um, and just like a Jefferson Kelsey mini stack, it's expensive, but then you just mix in a bunch of salary savers. I, I would rather do that than Mahomes and Kelsey. TJ, I know you have to bounce. So is there anything else you want to get off your chest here before you leave us? I've had a disappointing past couple of weeks. A lot of really good takes just mixed in with a couple, one or two bad ones that bring down a lineup and, that's me in the min cash range as opposed to uh, a big win. So hopefully going to turn it around. I feel like, you know, I, I can't see myself getting too much Patrick Mahomes, Jalen Hurts this week, just because there are so many other great options uh, from a DFS standpoint who are nice and cheap. I'll, I'll, I have no problem getting to, I mean, a little bit of problem getting to Zach Wilson, but Zach Wilson and Anthony Richardson and Tua Tagovailoa, all these guys, low 7Ks or, for Wilson's sake, sub 5K, um, I'm going to be looking to save salary there, save salary of running back, and just get as much Jefferson, Tyreek Hill, A.J. Brown, Chase, Waddle, all these am- like great, great receivers who are so expensive. They're definitely going to be my priority in DFS next week, and probably for the next few, they were my priorities in – uh, best ball this year these early expensive wide receivers that's uh i think they're going to be the top dogs from a dfs standpoint all year long them and christian mccaffrey um and so on a slate like next week with no christian mccaffrey because he's in the night game uh i can't see myself spending up at running back too much it's going to be all about those receivers uh chief and i'll cover a little bit more ground but we'll get you out of here where can the people find you on twitter tj so you can find me on Twitter, TJ underscore Zwarich5, Z-W-A-R-Y-C-H-5. And I'm always uh, posting content on the Roto Grinders page. So you can usually just find me on those socials as well. I'm writing up uh, Thursday night football, Sunday night football, and Monday night football prize picks articles, as well as DraftKings and FanDuel strategy for the Sunday night football showdown. Expert surveys, uh, my top fantasy quarterback rankings for every week. And so I do rank them one through 32 at one through 30, everybody who's playing, no matter how many games they are uh, with a little blurb about each of them. So make sure you check out those articles and yeah, you can find me on socials, TJ underscore Zwarich five, or also at agents of fandom where I'm talking about movies, TV shows and video games, stuff like that. Appreciate it, buddy. Enjoy the rest of your week. Check out TJ. Uh, We'll close out here shortly. Thanks for joining us again. Appreciate it. Chief. This doesn't have to be a super complicated doesn't have to be a super complicated answer. Are you in or out on Derrick Henry this week? Kyron Williams just had a hell of a game against these Colts. You know, they still have to force Buckner, but they had some trouble, uh, you know, keeping some points off the board. Big divisional game, usually pretty gross. We have Anthony Richardson, who's been putting up points at will against a, a good Titans front seven. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. There could be some sneaky points. I'm not feeling like some kind of crazy stack here, but I feel like, if Pittman get 10 targets, maybe he's certainly in play. Derrick Henry looked pretty good. The Titans were blocking really well. He typically has a you know, pretty good game against the Colts. Maybe you look at Pittman. You know, or uh, Henry, excuse me. Not like a ton of, of a super healthy game environment, but there are some individual one-offs, I think, in that game that could be pretty interesting. Yeah, man. I Look, I was on Derrick Henry last week. I talked about it, especially on draft case, where the price had come down to 7 k and nobody was interested in playing him. And, and and once again, we saw him pop for, I think, was it 122 and a touchdown? And he threw one. Like, huh? And he threw one, too. Right. So th- that's what I'm saying. It's like, look, Derrick Henry is still Derrick Henry. He's just kind of one of those guys you have to play every week. And as the price had come down, I talked about it on the Blitz show. I said, man, Derrick Henry at 7K is like, this is a, this is a good spot to start getting some shares, and sure enough, he came through in the clutch. So uh, I don't I don't hate the Derrick Henry call at all. 
And Tajay Spears is really cu- cutting into his work like a lot, but it's keeping him fresh. And uh, he's going to get the goal line work regardless. So uh, I, I think he's interesting. Uh, I think we're on the same page there. Uh, I promise we talk a little bit about Dallas. And I know you got to get out of here soon, too. So a uh, huge, huge NFC Sunday night football game. Dallas and San Fran. Dallas completely responded, uh, you know, forced New England to make a quarterback change in the middle of the game. We know New England had the problems, and I know you can't just say, well, Team X beat Team Y, so Team X should also beat Team Z. You know, New England hung in there against Miami a couple of weeks ago with that bizarre ending. But maybe we're pumping the brakes ever so slightly on Miami, right? That defense, you know, we'll see. Dallas, no doubter, no doubter against New England. Now they'll have arguably the toughest test in the NFC outside of Philly, traveling to San Francisco outside. I got to be honest with you. I do not expect Dallas to win this football game. But even if they keep this thing down to the final three or four minutes, I'll be very impressed. I will be very impressed. Big win for them regardless in week four. What are your expectations with them against the Niners, Chief? Uh, get destroyed. It's simple as that. <laughs> the Niners are the better team. I know the Cowboys, you know, their defense is, is good too. But I just – the Niners are at home. It's a Sunday night game. Dallas is coming off of another thrashing. They just they just bounced the the the, uh, the Patriots right out of there. I mean, I just think the 49ers are a better team, a better interior organization right now. And when you can continue to win games with Brock Purdy, that should tell you all you need to know about how good this team is. And that's not an indictment on Brock Purdy. It's about how this team is set up and built to win. Vegas has it as a a three-and-a-half-point game only uh, as of right now. It just doesn't – Dak Prescott hasn't won many of these outdoor across-the-country games. It it just feels like against a tough defense that will probably force him to be one-dimensional at some point. So I think it's going to be squarely on his shoulders to, to, you know, when it comes down to the fourth quarter, maybe they're down by four or six or seven to, to do something, to go out there and do it. Yeah. I mean, I look, I'm not writing Dallas off as a bad football team. Okay. that That's not what this is. I just think the 49ers are a better football team. And if this uh, game was in Texas, would you have a slightly different uh, opinion on how, you know, on, on a, outcome of this game no not at all so so you're selling dallas a little bit is it more of a new england is kind of a mess thing you know just look looking back like can you gauge can you gauge anything out of that off of that game i mean they were supposed to beat new england right yeah right like they're at home new england's not a better football team than them right now even though bill belichick's the coach like so I think their defense is better. Their offense is absolutely better. They should have beat New England. Um, it didn't help that Mac Jones threw had, had so many turnovers, right? Like that's the thing. Like Mac Jones had a ton of turnovers. Dak doesn't play defense; he plays offense. So, you know, opportunities were created. They're not going to get those gifts this week. They're not. Like Purdy's not turning the ball over four times. He he may turn it over once, and he might not turn it over at all. Like you know, so. If the defense isn't going to get the same amount of opportunities or create the same amount of opportunities for the offense, I can't in good conscience take the Dallas Cowboys to play to beat the 49ers, no matter where the stadium is. We are almost, you know, it's only Monday, and I get it, but almost all of the money and all of the bets are on San Fran with the spread and the money line. We'll have to see uh, how that trends throughout the week. You would imagine it would have to move. And if it doesn't move, then that's the uh, kind of a sharp indicator. Like if that thing is still three and a half by Saturday night, or, or maybe four, like that, that. If like I think I think you're right. I think San Fran should like is the better team. But if all the money keeps pouring in and that thing's not like four and a half, five by Sunday night, I don't know. I might follow the money. It might be one of those weird ones. We'll see. But. Uh, well, big, big prove it game from Dallas. I guess we could leave it at that. It's a big prove it game for yeah. the Cowboys. So I know you gotta get out of here, man. So uh, anything for story time before we head out? Uh, it's almost a wedding, and I think that's gonna be my my big thing every week now. It's a countdown, 
and we're we're almost a month away. The wedding's November fourth, so we're thirty two days away. Thirty two days away. Wow, does that make it sound really real? But I couldn't be more excited. <laughs> Love you, Geraldine. And uh, she doesn't listen to this podcast, by the way. So I'm, I'm literally just saying it because I love her. She won't even hear this. Uh, but I, um, I'm definitely ready. Um, and, and I can't wait. That's awesome, man. Uh, let, let's wrap it up. We will be back next week. Big shout out uh, to TJ. Yep. I need to make my way down to Nashville before the end of the season. My, my problem is, and I guess this is my little story time, is I want to go to a, a game that matters. I don't want to book a trip spend the money and you know it's a meaningless football game you, you want the you want the whole you want it to mean something right you go to you go to your favorite team's game so that's a conundrum i'm in and of course the titans are two and two now and i don't know what they are a t- typical titans team you don't really know what they are until they till they have a playoff game and you know it's tied up going into the fourth quarter right you just oh yeah it's just it's who they are uh so we'll find out some more about them this week against the colts chief where can the people find you on twitter at Chief Justice 06. Chief Justice 06. I am the Looch. Thank you all for tuning in. We'll be back at you next week. Have a great weekend and good luck, everybody.